All right, Brent Porcio, topvelocity.net. I wanted to put this video together to show uh, David Ardsma in his transformation through the 3 Expedition Velocity program. So J David Ardsma came to me after his 2014 season here on the left with the Cardinals. He spent that season in AAA. Um, he was averaging um, 86 to 89. Uh, David was someone who, at the best of his career with Seattle, I think in 2009, he was an upper 90s guy, closer, um, 60 something saves a lot of success and was falling off 33 years old here struggling to touch 90 um, so we'll be able to see a before and after because the one on the right here is after training this uh, last off season four months with the Braves or actually four months of training here at top velocity uh, before he went to play for the Dodgers and then was traded to the Braves or picked up by the Braves and played a big league season with the Braves. He was 94 in this pitch. Um, he was able to hit 95 a few times this year, but 94, he was a, a good consistent speed for him. He would fluctuate 91 to 94. And uh, we can really see what the 3 pitch Logic program did for him. Um, <clears throat> obviously, David is a big believer now in this approach and um, continues to train here this offseason, preparing for the 2016 season. So let's break it down. So we can let's take them both into leg lifts. Remember, this is 2014 where he was 86 to 89, and this is 2015 where he was 91 to 94. Okay. First, I want to time him out of the leg lift. So if we take it right where the 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 knee starts to come out of the leg lift, okay, we'll set a timer here, and then we're going to look over here with the Cardinals right as his uh, knee comes out of lift. We'll set a timer here. I can get one on screen. Uh, come on. Okay. Let's take it to the moment of front foot strike. Not a great shot here. The, the foot, it looks like it's touching right here. Okay. Here, the Braves touches down right there. So we can see a little bit faster through his stride. Um, <clears throat> in 2015 when he was 94 and it looks like he's definitely covered a longer distance no way to measure um, in with this uh, with with this uh, analysis tool but just looking at back foot um, just literally coming off the rubber here and significantly still on the rubber there um, so like I said, it would it'd be nice to see if we could have uh, a better way to measure distance. If we look at the upper body, it looks to be more separated. There's a little tucking going on here, um, more external rotation here. So it looks like he's starting actually shoulder rotation a little earlier. So let's look where the where the the leg front leg stabilizes next frame. Let's see. Yeah, next frame, and then let's look next frame here, 2014, where that knee lands and then stabilizes right there. And, and we're still seeing hip rotation might be the same, hips at this point. We definitely see now foot is off the rubber when it's not off the rubber here, and it still looks more separated almost into, uh, you know, maybe 120 degrees of external rotation. We look like he's just breaking 90. Uh, so more trunk rotation here. We, don't, we can't even see the glove side elbow. We can see it here. So he's, he's, he's uh, starting his trunk rotation earlier. Typically where we find signs of more hip-to-shoulder separation, that's going to be an increase of ball speed. That's also a big part of the approach. So, you know, the things we worked on with David, which we can see happening, is we worked on getting more force off the rubber, increasing back leg drive through triple extension, which ultimately opened up more stride distance he had lost a significant amount of stride distance from 2009 to 2014 we were able to gain a good amount of distance back uh, we can also see that in the front leg which is probably going to be hard to measure here because i don't have um, the cameras cut off at the bottom here but if i get a rough idea of that front leg angle 84 to here most recent 77 we can see there's a more linear front leg angle that's going to support a better transfer of energy going forward something we've also worked on so we can see as he goes into maximum external rotation 
we can see that there's more Ford trunk tail, which is another indication of uh, more torques in the arm, which typically lead to more ball speed. So 68 degrees with the trunk here. You know, in 65, so a little bit more of a trunk angle. It looks also that, it's hard to tell, but it looks like the elbow is definitely farther in front of the face. The elbow is pulled more back behind the head. Typical of an arm that's, that's loading harder, more torques in the arm. Okay. And then let's take it to release. This one jumps to release. Okay. And as we see here, it looks like the trunk continued to cover more distances. 39 to 45, so more trunk distances were covered. Um, and it looks like, too, once again, the front leg continued to move more linear. Went to a 75, went to an 84. Okay, and if we just reverse that back, I mean, look at the front knee. If we're watching the front knee here, we can see after st stabilization, as he went into pitch release, a big kickback of the front leg. Many studies correlate front leg force production to ball velocity. If we watch the front leg here, okay, he hits. Not much of a kickback as significant as what we're seeing here. Okay, boom, a big kickback into release. All right, so all the things that we worked on really showed to be successful in him gaining you know, his six miles an hour, or his, his five to six miles an hour. Um, we, re we see more momentum down the mound. We see more of a stride distance uh, than going down front foot by him getting off the rubber is an indication. A more linear front leg force vector is an indication of a more stride length. We see more hip-to-shoulder separation once he stabilizes front foot. Okay. We see more trunk tilts going forward. It's an indication of more energy moving up the trunk. We see a more loaded arm, more maximum exorientation or more uh, abduction with that maximum exorientation. We see a more dynamic front leg force production and going to pitch release and continuing to show more trunk distances being covered. So, you know, David was also able to um, increase his lean muscle mass. As you can see, we gained about, um, I'd say, a good 15 pounds of mass. Uh, in between um, or during that off season before going into the 2015 season. He also gained um, more vertical jump, uh, more distance in a broad jump. So definitely more of that mass was in his lower half to help him move more forces. Um, and we see him biomechanically making a big significant uh, correction, being putting more force uh, off the rubber, which typically he liked to just kind of slam the knee down. Uh, and then roll off the rubber. We actually see him extending off the rubber into front foot, uh, which increased that force production. So a good biomechanical change for him. Also helped him get more internal rotation in the back leg to remove stress off his adductor, which had been a problem in previous years because of this older drive leg approach. Um, and, and then, like I said, we see it all converting up the chain. And most importantly, we see the big jump in ball speed. So just wanted to break this down so you can see the before and after shot of David Ardsma before he came into the 3X Pitching Velocity Program and after. Um, it was uh, beneficial. It was a real plus for David to have previous footage of him throwing at a higher ball speed that we could use as a template. Uh, but still, following the 2014 season, he really was in a rut uh, with his ball speed, um, you know, being somewhere 86 to 89. Um, and we were able to rejuvenate um, him and redevelop him back to close to his old self. And we're still working in that direction of uh, going into the 2016 season.